Hi, Jide from Children Record. Today I'll talk about how to set up a MIDI controller in Ableton to do some dub mixing. So first, before opening your DAW, you have to set up the preferences of your sound card. Here I have a Motu sound card and I have a little program where I can set the sample rate and the sample spare buffer and the master clock source. So if you have another sound card, you must have a little program like this to configure your sound card. Let's concentrate on the sample spare buffer. So this is the number of samples that will be processed by the computer each time. The buffers are like some little wagon of a train and the more they are small and the more the computer can go fast to calculate and process and the less latency you have. Latency is the difference of time between when you move a controller and when it is effective into the DAW. So generally, 256, it's okay if you want to have five or six effect plugin and uh, it will run without crackle. It's okay you have like 10 milliseconds latency, which is nothing uh, when you mix a dub. At the end of the composition uh, step, I bounce in audio. So when I will do my mix dub, I will have only four plugins or five, and those plugins will just concern the effect. So that's the reason why you can have small buffer when you mix, because reading audio don't require a lot of CPU. Have some big plugin and a lot of them um, induce some calculation, and this is what uh, uh, need a big buffer. So okay. Uh, it's a, a way to, to save some CPU, so you bounce everything, you have just audio sources, and a little buffer is announced for three or four plugins we will put on the auxiliaries, okay? I stop there for this. So now I will open the door, go to Option and Preferences, look for the MIDI dongle, and we will concentrate on the MIDI control surface <laughs> setup. So I have several controllers. We will concentrate on the line five. And I have this controller, launch control from Novation. So this one, okay. And Ableton recognized the Novation with um, automatic mapping and a dedicated script, okay. And the script of the controller is the way the controller will be recognized by the DAW and go on automatic function on the layout. But I don't want Ableton to recognize my launch control as a default controller because I just want one layout of controller with one knob for one function, all way of my project of mixing. So you in the input, you choose your controller, so launch control or other controller. On the output, you choose controller. And control surface, instead of looking for launch control also, you set it to none. If I don't set it to none here, the next time I will open Ableton, Ableton will recognize it as his own default controller. And I don't want it. I want each time I open it, it just recognizes a MIDI controller, but not assigned as default for Ableton. So if you want to do this, this is the way to do this. Next step, we go into the MIDI port section and we find our controller. My controller is E. Launch control XL. Input. Okay, and I click on the remote column to tell Ableton, yes, I want to uh, assign this controller to some remote thing into the um, Ableton. So when you check the remote input and output of the, your controller, when you set them to on, you can close these preferences. So before I open my audio file, I will check the tempo of my stem. 67, so I put the tempo here before dragging my stems. So I will just use four of them to go quicker in the process. And uh, okay, so you drag them and when you hold control, the, it will put it vertically and address each audio to a separate audio track.
Okay, so I have my stem here. Let's go. So to assign, you have to click here on the MIDI box or Control M and everything become blue. And now you can click on every blue controller and assign your control. This controller, the Novation XL, have two modes, eight memories on each mode. First mode by default is the factory mode. Okay. And you have eight memories, which will light up here when you click on this knob. You click and hold, and it will appear eight memories. And you have also the user mode, the one we will use, because remember, we don't want Ableton to recognize it as a factory controller. So we click on the user mode, and it will be on the first memory. And it's okay, we don't need to use the eight memory because I, I recall also that I just want one template and one parameter per control. So, okay, after you, you click on the user mode on your controller, let's assign. So first mute, second mute, third and fourth. Uh, then we will assign the volume. One, two, three and four, okay? When I assign controllers, there's a whole list here where we can calibrate. For example, here I want when my physical controller is full up, I want it to stay at zero. But you see, when I put it full up, it goes to plus six dB. So this is where I go back to my MIDI. This is where we will calibrate our controller. So I click on maximum for my four controller to zero, maximum zero, 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 zero. Okay, that way, when I move my control to the top, it just stick at zero. Okay, this is the first thing, uh, calibration. After which we will need, um, why not, three effect. So to add effect, you right click, insert return track, and let's add three return track. Okay, the more return track you add here and the more aux sends you will have here. Um, let's assign the aux send. So again, MIDI or Control M. And I click and I turn the corresponding physical knob. Let's go back to this. Now we have we need to bring some effect. I choose a phasing, a delay, and a reverb from the Ableton effect. But uh, of course, you can choose uh, the effect you like. Verify on all your effect plugin that the parameter dry wet is 100% wet. Wet is the affected sound. Dry is the non-affected sound. And as we have the dry signal from the track itself, we don't need it into the auxiliaries. Okay, so delay full wet also, and reverb full wet also. Everything okay. So first thing first, I will assign the volume of the return track. Okay, so first. That's okay. Same way, I'll calibrate here, zero to the max, and minus infinity to the minus. Okay. That way, I can control also the balance between FX and my track. Uh, I can assign also the mute. So again, MIDI, mute A, mute B, and mute C. And I have a last track on my controller, so I can assign also the master and set it maximum to zero also. So I will use those knob from the effect return track to assign the parameter of my effect. So let's go first for the phasing. The first one, for example, for frequency, okay? the frequency of the phasing. So I click MIDI, I click on frequency, and I turn corresponding knob. Second knob will be feedback, feedback. 
and why not sodnum the uh, amount or let's say the rate of the LFO. Now let's go on to the delay and same thing we will assign several parameters from the delay. So the most obvious would be uh, the time. So I think it's okay but uh, I like to have it in uh, millisecond. We will stay simple and let them link it. Okay, so what we can assign is first the time, yeah, so midi. Let's go on the GD track, which is the second here, and assign the time. Where they are linked, you just need to assign one, and it will move the two. And let's go into calibration, because minimum of this delay box is one MS, and maximum is five seconds. So let's go for one and a half second, and minimum also, uh, we don't hear delay under 20 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds, so let's put uh, 50 milliseconds at the minimum. That way, when I move my knob uh, on the time parameter, it don't cover uh, the whole 5 ms, and you will have far more precision in the time setting, real time setting, than if you have to cover 5 seconds with all the knob. So this is the first calibration. So let's assign uh, this also. Okay, feedback on the second knob. We don't need to calibrate it for the moment. And there's this uh, infinity box, assign it to a switch. And this infinity switch will, will create a hold on the delay. So you may have a lot of delay and when you click here, it will be non-stop to infinity. So this is a good parameter for the delay. And we have one knob left on this column, okay, on the delay column, and we will, why not, uh, assign the filter, filter feedback. On the last knob, um, the band of the filter, okay. Let's move it to see how it behaves, yes. So we can concentrate the delay on the low frequencies or high frequencies. Let's go to the next step. Reverb um, parameter we need to assign for reverb. What I like to to assign is the pre-delay on the first one and the decay time on the second one. And same thing, you verify to calibrate your knob. It tells you for the decay, 200 ms minimum, one minute to the maximum, which is far too much. Choose something you like. I choose 15 seconds, which is already Big, big, big. So, okay, we have two parameters. And for the third parameter, let's drop a filter after this reverb. Auto filter. Yeah. So we have an auto filter. And uh, what we can talk a little about also is uh, effect rack. So I will put this uh, filter into a rack and assign one or two parameters to one knob and this will be the tuning for, for the reverb in frequency. And we will assign this one knob to uh, the last available physical knob. So let's put it into a right. Let's put even the, the two effect on interact. You select the two, select the first, hold shift, select the second. Control G will group them. Then in this group, you will have your two effects. You can give it a name, filter verb. I want to have the signal through the filter and also the dry signal of this reverb. And what I want to achieve is to, to do a sweep on this reverb. So I already group the two into the filter verb and I can also click only on the auto filter and control G and group it. This one, I will call it a parallel filter. And to do a parallel chain into Ableton, you have to click here, which is the list icon. And you see your first chain. This is the chain of the filter. So let's name it filter. Right click beside it and create another chain and we will change the color in blue, for example. And this chain have no effect, okay, after it. So this is a dry 
This is a dry channel of this verb. Let's put this filter on a band pass, add a bit of resonance. So we will have this sweep filter in addition to the dry signal of the reverb. Let's call it dry verb. It's uh, more eloquent. Okay, so of course, this parallel filter, you can build one and put it on the delay. You will have very good result also. Um, so after, to, to get your final control, you can assign the frequency to one macro knob. Okay, so uh, if you want the whole course, you will take the frequency knob and drop it counterclockwise full. And when it is set, right click on it and map it to macro one. Okay, that way this first macro one will go from 26 to uh, 20,000 hertz. Okay, so let's drop a color so we recognize what we do. You can rename it also in bigger later. Could also assign a second parameter. So let's say my second parameter will be the resonance. So let's drop it to the minimum. Drop this to the minimum also and assign the resonance to the same knob. Now to calibrate the resonance, because if I put it all the way up, you see the resonance in the graphic going up to the top. And it's really too much because a little in between. See resonance parameter when it's full. It's 125%, so over 100%. It means that when you are at 101%, the filter is start auto-oscillating mathematically. And when you are 110, it's a uh, whistling like a bird. This is what I call um, auto-oscillation. So let's calibrate it. To calibrate it, you have to click on the map button here. And another list will appear. And you see, this is not the same map buttons of the MIDI. When you are in the MIDI assignment, it is blue, everything. And when you are in the map setting, the what you can assign become green. So I go into the, the list and I see, OK, frequency. Do I want it from 26 to 100? And no. Uh, reverb generally we don't want it into the sub okay so we will uh, limit the lower limit the minimum limit to let's say 200 a bit less a bit more but i will type 200 for this tutorial so when my knob will be counterclockwise filter peak of this bond pass will be around 200 which is uh, too much, you will hear, but uh, let's say we continue. And maximum also, uh, 20K, it's too much. Uh, let's say 9, 9 or 12, it's okay. 9, it's okay. 9K, it's okay. Okay, so now when you are in the map mode, you can move and test during you are in the map mode, which is different than the... Uh, MIDI mode, you can't test. You have to assign and go out of the MIDI mode to test. When you are in the map mode, you can test while you are configuring. So now my resonance is too too much here. I will say maximum even uh, something like 50% it's enough. And as I don't want it to be at zero when I'm uh, counterclockwise on my one knob effect, I will set it to mm, 15%. That way, when I move my knob, I have a, a small resonance, like even a zero resonance. And when the more I will go to the high frequency and the more the resonance will be big. So this is one example. In this kind of parallel effect rack, you can, you can do whatever you want. Parallel everything. Okay, we have set up most of our control on the effect. Let's see. Okay, I go back to here just to assign the three knob for the verb parameter. So as this parallel filter rack is inside the filter verb rack, I have now to assign this knob 
to the final knob here. Okay, so let's go assign map to macro knob one, and I have my frequency here. Okay, and when I move my frequency, it alters two signal. Yeah, and for the fun, we can also uh, why not assign this dry to the same knob frequency and we will calibrate it in a way that when I'm full clockwise with my magic uh, one effect knob the dry verb volume will drop down a bit making the filter uh, volume of the verb being more pronounced okay so let's say I want it when I am full clockwise uh, to be 6 dB lower than normal and when I'm counterclockwise I want it to stay to zero okay and I will assign also the filter volume to the same knob again yeah so I have the filter volume I find the line okay chain volume it's the filter volume let's say I want it at max yes 6 dB this is what I want and when counterclockwise at zero Assign this to the to the knob. Look at all the parameters here will move at the same time under the control on of one knob. So the volume of each chain will move, the bound frequency of the filter chain will move, and when I'm at the max, we have six dB filter minus six dry verb. And counterclockwise, everyone zero, zero, and less resonancy. So this is the third parameter of my reverb and the two other, as I said before, in our effect rack, we will assign the pre-delay. I already assigned it, yeah, okay. I want to assign it here. And assign also the DK1. It will tell me the same. He's telling me that I already map it onto the CC35 because I, I had mapped it directly on the machine first. But as I build a rack, um, I love to, to assign them on the final interface here. So I tell him, yes, I want it on, the, on here. Okay, I can quickly calibrate them, 15, it's okay. And I will assign them now through the MIDI blue assignment my pre-delay and my decay time. We are on the reverb. We have the control of the return volume of the reverb, control over the mute of the reverb. Let's go into this window, control on the pre-delay of the reverb, first knob, second knob, the decay, and third knob, our filter trick here. Yeah. When we go on the delay channel, same, we have the volume, return of our delay, the time of our delay from 50 to one second and a half, the feedback of our delay and the filter of our delay. And one switch to engage the old infinite mode. On the phasing, we have frequency of the delay, the phasing, excuse me, feedback and the speed of the modulation of the LFO. First, you can set a loop around your track with a bit of silence at the end. So you have two keys now. Or you will uh, record audio of your mixing, or you will record the move of each knob in MIDI and the audio. Every move of each send and the volume and mute will be written inside. The best way if you want to do several mix, three or four mix, and keep you all your automation, first thing first, you will duplicate like three times your whole track. And control D, one, two time, okay? That way, when you want to mix three dub in a row and keep all the information, MIDI and audio, you will just uh, have your first mix, second and third mix here. So for the audio, it's simple. 
you will add an uh, audio track here, call it rec, for example. Then we will assign the input of this track. So my input here can be or the resampling or the master bus, okay? The two are good to record. The input is on master. Every time you are recording your own audio from your DAW, just set the monitor line on off. You know, it's a safety first. So now you can arm this track. It is arm ready to record for when you will press record here, but no possible feedback loop. I can even put it to master. There's no problem. You want to record the manual automation from your knob, you will click this. Okay, everything seems to work well when I move the parameters of my effect, the delay. For the phasing, when we send an instrument to the phasing, we want it to go into the delay, for example. And for it, we have to enable the sends that correspond to the uh, delay. Uh, for security task, Ableton deactivates sends from the return track. That way you can activate them one by one because you know you will need them. So here I need the delay for the phasing to be enabled and the uh, reverb, for example. So phasing into the reverb and phasing into delay. And I can add the third one, like the delay going into the reverb. So I activate, right click, enable send. And I will assign my last knob of the physical controller to this. Okay. For a better behavior of your dub effect, you can add before each effect, I mean uh, phasing, delay, and filter, you can add a low cut. So you add a EQ8 before the first one, and you will tune it to test, but I think 120 is already good. That way, even if you launch the bass into the effect, because the bass can have also mid-frequency, but have a lot of sub frequency, so when you will launch the bass into the effect, if you want it, you will not have all the sub information in it. 120 and a bit more. So as I set it, I can rename it for more clarity and call it low cut. And then I will right click, copy it, or control C, and paste it before the other effect.
here I'm moving the filter uh, in the river filter chain. delay movements 